Hi. Hi. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Kerry Fukunaga. I am the director and writer of Sin Nombre, coming out in theaters nationwide March 20th, and you're watching Gordon and the Whale. Mira, yo sé por qué vos quieres hacer este viaje, pero todavía no sé por qué yo tengo que hacerlo. She was taking a chance to find a better life. Aquí no hay nada para vos, Aira. Nada. He was caught up in a world of brutality. But when he tried to leave his violent past behind, gang put a price on his head and he met the one person who would change his life forever This guy. Question Do you mind taking two minutes <laughs> for that guy? I'm, I'm gonna get those little flips. Yeah, this is the HD. Yeah, nice. You should just you should film me interviewing you, okay. and then <laughs> this is really post post industrial. Wow. Your first film, your short film went to Sundance. You did great there. You took this to Sundance. First feature film did awesome there. There's lots of talk about. Oscars and uh, for you. How do you yeah. feel about that? How does that make you feel? I mean, it's early buzz. It's early, so yeah, I don't. That's, I'll just take it with a grain of salt because it's early. Yeah. Um, first, we gotta get audiences to the theater. Yeah, so it'll that's happen. What I'm worrying about next. Uh, in terms of awards and later on the, in the year, I, I really, um, um, you know, of course, I hope the film does well, but it's not the most important thing. So. Yeah, but is one of your main focuses like cinematography? Because didn't both of them win? Cinematography Awards at Sundance. No, the short film uh, got a like a jury prize, just an honorable mention. Okay. And uh, uh, the feature film it got the cinematography award, the directing award. But um, uh, I, mean, I love cinematography. I, I'm also a cinematographer, so um, my DP and I spent a lot of time making sure the look of the film was consistent. Sort of like sort of trying to achieve the goal we set out in the beginning, which Absolutely. was um, sort of this photojournalistic philosophy. Of the yeah. Moving away from uh, frenetic, overly treated um, movies. Absolutely. Going kind of, not, not necessarily doing something new, definitely just going back to like an older style. Yeah. So. Can I ask, because you brought up the, the, your short film, um, and they both kind of deal with this immigrant experience. What do you, what do you draw to about that? Uh, well, there are two films, but they're really kind of one film, in the sense that the, the short film led to the feature film, and they're kind of one and the same in terms of this... That, that project, researching that world. Um, I don't think I'll do a, a, an immigrant film. At least I won't do a gang film for a while. I may never do a, an immigrant film again. But, um, cause I, I feel like, uh, uh, I, maybe I would, but I, I, there's so many stories out there and this is just that one particular part of the journey I wanted to tell. There's, a, there's many different ways you can tell this part of the journey, but uh, there's, you can only make so many films in a lifetime and uh, they all take so long. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather do other things. I don't know. I'd try we're things. Out, we're done. I mean, maybe I'll come back to it. Like, I'm just trying to see if I, I want to know what else I can do, too. This is technically, this would be considered my thesis film. About you. So I haven't had a chance to make many films yet, so I want to try different stuff. Have you sat with an audience yet? Watching yeah, this? I saw it with an audience for the first time at Sundance. Okay. So, oh, wow. What a, what a first experience. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't nervous, not at all. Um, I sat in the back and. Uh, I got, that's actually the first time I realized how dangerous the film, or not dangerous, how uh, violent the film was. Really? In the danger scenes. And uh, I, you know, it was, uh, it was a, in one way I realized that's why I like to go see comedies in the theater, because like the energy of the audience just, it just yeah. becomes like, totally. you know, there's sort of synergy, to, it makes things more funny in the same way, like being an audience, you can feel when an audience doesn't like the film, or when they're feeling tension or whatnot, it's amazing. Uh, I, uh, that, that, that energy it's an audience and um, I definitely could feel them in the first half of the film reacting to the violence and it was like I didn't realize how also how consistent it was that like every like 10 minutes something violent was happening <laughs> right. and so like I had like there was like two more violent scenes happening that were going to happen in the first part of the film and people were kind of starting to walk out like we didn't lose that many probably lost like 15 just on my side of the audience and it was an echo so it was like 1300 people so 15 yeah. out of 1300 isn't that bad yeah. No, I got a lot of water beforehand 
too, bro. I'm like, so there's yeah. gonna be I didn't see them come back in. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was just sitting there thinking, like, God, if you guys can just get another 15 more minutes, we'll be okay <laughs> for like another hour. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't know why I was talking about that. I'm just trying to like seeing it with the audience for the first time. Um, it was great to see that, and since then I haven't watched it with the audience. I mean, I've seen my movie so much, so yeah. many times. Yeah. I think with that exaggeration, I've seen it all the way through at least more than more than 150 times. Wow. So um, that's enough. Wow. Well, every time you watch it, do you do you latch onto a different character? Because there's so many storylines in this. There's it's not really just one person's journey. So does each time you watch it, is it different for you? You maybe follow this character, even writing it. Did you write it from one? Yeah, I guess that's, yeah, did you see it as one person's journey initially? Um, it initially was supposed to be Cyrus' story, and then um, Casper, he ended up having to do in the story, and where his story, where his character, the decisions he made, where that led him, his, his story kind of became the one with the most to do, and it sort of became his story. But it, I wanted it to be a balance, and in a lot of ways, the development process, the studio also really wanted it to be her film. But in a way, she... It, she doesn't have as many options as the character. She doesn't have any uh, opportunities to make decisions. Or I could have her do something I did, but in a lot of ways she's a very passive character in this journey. It's very hard to make her the, the principal role. Because, um, you know, people are, are defined by the choices they make. So, um, and in terms of the other characters like Smiley and uh, Little Mago and Soul, um, I, what I do, and this is something actually I learned in Sundance Lab, because this is my first, fit, my first script as well. Uh, a, a trick basically where you would just um, if there were weaker characters you would just go through a script completely focusing on that character and seeing where there was this kind of like repetition of sort of beats on them and try to find new ways to develop them through the story. Can you talk a little bit about the um, like I've just read that you you know the research that you did that you actually went down and like boxcar hopped pretty much in Mexico and how can you just talk about what that experience was like? Yeah um, I did um I did about six or seven research trips down there. Uh, the first one being the most intensive, being that I wrote the script right after the first one. But I continued continue to go back because there was sort of things I needed to know or, or, or just to sort of fill in the, the gaps in some of my research. Uh, it entailed mainly um, interviewing immigrants and um, either shelters or, or groups that work with immigrants as well as police and then going to prisons and interviewing gang members to sort of like ascertain um, what role they played in this in this world because um, the uh, newspapers would always say they were involved in immigration but I couldn't really figure out how exactly they were involved because they weren't smuggling necessarily so um, it took me a long time to really get to the truth uh, because it's, it's really hard to get them to talk about how they make their money right. obviously they'll talk to you about exploits and whatnot but um, but the actual sort of like the, the income side of the gang is um, the most protected uh, it's basically racketeering, so the, their version of it for immigration would have been uh, uh, controlling the hubs, the hub points where immigrants go through, and smugglers go through, and then taxing them. Wow. So, but it's, it's you know, it's, you gotta control those areas. Yeah. How did you get them to tell you that? Uh, I spent like, a, by the end, I spent about two years with a, a small group of them. As I was able to sort of will down the group to the select few, I felt were the most honest. <laughs> and then, uh, we're now mid. <laughs> uh, a couple of them died. Yeah. Uh, As a, uh, not because of me. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> That's a just gotta get it out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, there was three I was speaking to in prison right outside Temple Chula, and then one of them basically got shanked in prison. Uh, so, yeah. And this is in Hunter? Yeah, boy, so this was all Chuck, this, was, this was Chuck. This, this, my no. story is focused in southern Mexico, so right. I didn't know most of my reason my game research, especially was in southern Mexico. Okay. So um, I didn't do any research in the United States. Okay. I did in Central America. So with, you know, discussing like the violence and brutality of the film, what was the hardest scene for you to make? The hardest scene uh, was the scene where Casper kills Little Mago. For me, uh, that was hard logistically, and I was very tired by that point of shoot. Um, you know, I was, I was uh, organizing pretty much everything from my head. We didn't have a shot of the story. Storyboard, so everything was just like everyone was sort of like waiting on me to know what we were shooting next, and it was a complicated uh, um, trying to keep things. Um, uh, the continuity of the scene was difficult because um, we we're compa we were basically combining stuff from different parts of our production, and uh, 
we had a big tree in the background that was sort of like to help block the sun when there was sun and it wasn't cloudy and we needed to be raining. Um, <clears throat> but anytime we moved the train forward, we got past the tree, we'd have to move forward until we got to another tree. So there was that and that own set, set of headaches with the continuity part and being in the rain all day long and, and uh, yelling over generators and, and, and trying to like get everyone, including the extras, like in a emotional state that would seem realistic was yeah. uh, it took a lot out of me <laughs> it's pretty mexican style uh, shoot and this was my first feature i also had to be baptized right in the shoot which involved uh, nice. lots of liquids and, <laughs> uh, and paint and those kind of things poured on me champagne and tequila and feathers and dough um and then also the, the gang the kind of got crew uh sent me a lot cut their hair uh ambush me and shave my head so, <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> humor. So, can you, can you talk a little bit about how um, Diego Luna and Gail um, Garcia Vernal got involved? Yeah, Diego and Gael have a company called Kanana, which has a deal of focus. And since my producer had her deal of focus as well, and we want to make the film Mexico is the perfect opportunity to marry both uh, companies and what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. So. Yes. From executive producers Diego Luna and Gael Garcia Bernal comes the first film from one of cinema's most exciting new voices. Tarde o temprano Luzón lo va a encandilar. Vamos a correr la voz.